Today I'm going to be showing you all how to get Windows XP 64-bit on VirtualBox. And if you scroll down in the description, you'll see that I have two links down there. The first link should be getmyos.com and the second one should be Oracle VM VirtualBox or something like that.com. So the first thing you want to do is click on the first link, which is get my OS. And once you're on that website, just go up to the top and type in Windows XP. And click on the first one that comes up, which should just be Windows XP. Once you type that in, you should see a page like this. And what you're going to want to do here is click on the first link down here that comes up, which should be Windows XP Professional X64 Edition Free Download Disk Image ISO Files. And on this page here, you'll see a download button. Click on the download button. Then make sure you have the top one selected here, which would be Windows XP Pro X64 English.ISO. Then go ahead and click on download. And here's where you'll have to save it to Google Drive. So make sure you do have a Google account and you're signed into that in your Google Chrome or whatever your browser you're using. And select Google Drive and then click on allow access to Google Drive account. And then you click on your account here. And then you're just going to click on allow. And allow again. And now it has permission to store this ISO file in your Google Drive so that you can download it. And now go ahead and click on download file. And as you can see, it's now a Google Drive file, so you can just click on download anyway. And now you should see a pop up like this, and this is asking where you want to store that ISO file. I'm going to store it in my downloads folder for ease of access, but you can store whatever you choose. Once the ISO file is finished downloading, now head over to the VirtualBox website I have linked down below, which should be linked to. And once you're on that website, just click on the big blue download virtual box button. Then click on Windows Hosts. And it'll have you download another file. I'm going to go ahead and save that to my downloads folder again. But once again, you guys can choose where you want to store that. All right. And once those files are both done downloading, you can go ahead and close out of your browser. And now go to the folder where you downloaded those files to. Once you're in that folder, go ahead and double click on the VirtualBox file that you downloaded, which should end with a .exe. And now it's going to ask you to set up and install VirtualBox. So you can go ahead and click on Next. Click on Next again. And you can choose if you want to create a start menu entry, if you want to create a shortcut on the desktop, if you want to create a shortcut in the quick launch bar and if you want to register all the files that are associated with the application. I'm going to leave all those checked, but that is purely up to you guys. And now it's asking if it can install some network features for the VirtualBox machines, and you're going to want to go ahead and click on Yes. And now click on Install. And you'll receive a pop-up now asking if this app can make changes to your device. You're going to click Yes on that. Once that is completed, just go ahead and leave Start VirtualBox checked and click on Finish. And now VirtualBox should have opened up and you should be seeing something like this. And over here will be where all your virtual machines are going to be stored. And once you create one, you'll be able to see all the details about it over here. So today we're going to be creating a Windows XP virtual machine. So to do this, you're going to want to go up here and click on New. And the first thing you'll want to do is type in a name. So I'm just going to name this Windows XP 64 bits. And you guys can name that whatever you like, but I'm just going to go with that name. And now it's going to ask where you want to store the virtual machine. You can either leave this as default or you can choose another location. I'm going to go ahead and choose one of my bigger drives. And if you guys choose another drive or another location, what you want to do is create a new folder. So to create a new folder, just right click in blank space. 
and then click on new and then go over to folder and name it something unique like something like maybe virtual box windows xp or just something simple so you can find it if you need it later and once you do that just go ahead and click on select folder and choose where you want to select which version of Windows you'll be running. So it automatically put Microsoft Windows and this will be Microsoft Windows 64 bit. Then click on next. And depending on which kind of virtual machine you're running, you're going to want more or less RAM. And if you have like 16 gigs of RAM on your PC, I would recommend giving this virtual machine about maybe like four, uh, I'd say about four gigs of RAM just so it has plenty and you won't see any uh, lag spikes or anything. But if you have like eight gigs of RAM, I'd give it more like two, one or two gigs of RAM. And here's where you'll create the virtual hard disk. So just click on create a virtual hard disk now and then click on create. And now you'll see a few options here. VDI is really nice because it only allocates to how much space you actually need. Whereas both VHD and VMDK will set to their selected space and won't allow Kate as they need more space. So they'll just take up unnecessary space. Once you have VDI selected, just go ahead and click on next. And here's where you can select on dynamically allocated, which will just give you more space on your computer. And as you can see, it has the same location selected that we selected earlier for our disk to install on. I'm going to go ahead and give this about 20 gigs, but 10 gigs is plenty for a Windows XP machine. Once you have that selected, just go ahead and click on create. And as you can see, our machine is now snowing up on the left, like I said earlier. And you can see some details about it over here. Now here's where it gets a little more complicated. You're going to want to go up to settings. You can leave the general page as it is. Go down to system. As you can see, we have the correct amount of RAM here. And in the boot order, you're going to want to uncheck floppy and leave both of these checked. And you can leave everything else how it is. And then in processor here, you're going to want to select two. So this is basically like two virtual cores for your virtual machine. But you could do more or less depending on what kind of CPU you have. And go ahead and leave both of these unchecked. And acceleration you can leave as it is, which is default. Next, go over to display. And you're going to want to give it 128 megs of RAM, which will help a little bit with the lag. Leave it at one monitor or two, depending on how you want it. Leave the scale factor at the regular one. Leave the graphics controller as VBOX VGA. And leave 3D acceleration unchecked for now. You can do whatever you like with remote display, but I haven't used it too much and I don't have too much experience with it, but if you do, go ahead and set that up. And then recording is also up to you. I'm not going to mess around with that one too much. I'm just going to leave it unchecked for now. So now go ahead and head over to storage. And in storage, this is where you'll add that ISO file that we downloaded earlier. That ISO file is basically how you install Windows XP to the virtual hard disk we created. And you'll be using that shortly. So to add the ISO file, simply click on the empty disk here. And then go over to this disk over here with the arrow pointing down. And click on choose a disk file. That should open up your folders. And then head over to where you downloaded the file to. And double click on that ISO file. Once you have that selected, you are all set here. And you can go to the next option, which is audio. Audio is all set, you can leave that as normal. Network should be good for now, so you can leave all that at the same. Serial ports are all set also, so you don't have to change anything there. Your USB controller is just fine, so just leave that. Shared folders are a little more advanced, and I'll show how to do that in another tutorial, so you can just leave that as it is. And user interface is all good also, so there's nothing you need to change here. And once you have gone through all these menus, you can just go ahead and click on OK. And you'll see that some of the things have been adjusted here, such as the video memory. And you can now see that the ISO file is showing up here also. 
So now all you need to do is just click on start, which is this green arrow right here. And it's now going to initialize the disk. And on the first startup, it's going to ask you to select your startup disk, which should be the Windows XP ISO here. If you have multiple, make sure that you click on your Windows XP one, since that's the machine we set up. And once you do that, just click on start. On here, you're going to get a few options. The first option is if you want to install Windows Now, press Enter. If you need to repair Windows, which we're not going to be doing, you can press R. And if you want to quit the setup, press F3. And in this tutorial, we're going to be installing, so go ahead and press Enter. And now it's going to ask you to read through the license. And once you do that, just go ahead and click on F8 to say you agree. And now it's going to ask where you want to install Windows XP. And it looks like it's already created a partition for you. So just go ahead and press enter. And I recommend using NTFS file system, just a regular old one. On this page here, you can just click on enter to restart your computer faster. You don't need to press anything here, it'll go ahead and boot automatically. And as you can see, Windows XP is already booting up and it's going to bring you into the main setup menu here. Okay, and now it's asking for your language and as Looks like it's already set to English for me, which is good. So I'm going to go ahead and click on next. Here's where you'll type in your name. And if you're not a part of an organization, you can just go ahead and leave that blank. And you should now see a page like this here. I had to do some searching around to find this product key, but this is the correct one that works with this version of Windows. Each version of Windows XP and its ISO has a different product key that it's supposed to work with. And make sure that if you download the link that I provided that you use this product key here and I will also have this typed down in the description if you don't want to copy it right off the screen once you have that typed in just go ahead and click on next and here's your will type in the computer name and add a password and since this is a virtual machine I'm not gonna add a password but if you guys want to go right ahead And the date should have set automatically, but if, if it didn't, then it's not too hard to uh, set the correct one. Alright, here's the network setup. So just leave it on typical. Click on no. And as you can see, we are now booted into Windows XP. It's the iconic start menu. And it's asking about your display settings. And you should be able to click on that and it'll ask if we can automatically set the resolution, which should help. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on yes. And as you can see, it improved the window size by a little bit. So that'll make it a little more usable. And it's also asking if you want to take a tour of Windows XP. It's quite a throwback. I recommend it. I'll go ahead and try the internet out for you. Go ahead and search up google.com. And as you can see, the internet works just fine. And yeah, that's how you get Windows XP on VirtualBox in 2021. I hope to help you all out, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if the links become outdated or anything, definitely let me know, and I'll work on updating those as fast as I can. And also leave any recommendations for future things down below, and I'll make sure to cover those. Thank you all so much for watching.